Hi, welcome to my channel. If you don't already know, I'm Abdul Wahab and I'm a college math instructor. And in this particular video, we're going to look at how to evaluate some um, basic integral, um, I mean, basic, how to integrate some basic functions. But before we get right into the heart of solving these two problems, what we'll do is I will give you an overview of what integration is and um, what are the most important rules that you need to know right in order to be able to integrate such functions so let's just get started and build our knowledge on this now um they are they are quite um so let's look at different functions and how to integrate them okay now uh, in the previous video um in this integration series we have talked about how to integrate this function when you have y equal to x raised to power n we basically said um integral of this dx would be what x raised to power n plus one over n plus one plus constant. Okay. Now, uh, what about basic trig functions? I think you would understand how to integrate um, sine x. Um, how you think about this is which function in which when I differentiate it will give me sine x, right? So I'm thinking of a function in which when I when I differentiate it will give me sine x. And what is that um, function? right, it's gonna be minus cosine x, right? Because the, the, the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. So minus times minus would give us sine, right? So this is the relationship between this function and this one. When I differentiate this, so differentiate, um, differentiate the right-hand side, it gives me the left-hand side, the function inside, the um the left hand side so the it will give me um okay it will be equal to the function inside the integral the integral integral okay all right so this is the relationship between these two functions when i take the derivative of this one i will get this one okay that is the relationship. Now let's look at other functions. Uh, what about cos x? Um, of course, integral of cos x, dx would be what? That would be sine x, right? Because when I differentiate sine x, it will give me cos x. And we should look at some other ones. Now it's not so easy to, um, to see tan x. You would have to find some you know, different methods to tell us which function in which when we differentiate to give us an x. So um, this would learn from some of the strategies I would be explaining soon. Now, but let's look at some common functions that we already know, like second square x. We know this is integral of what? Second square x, the x. This must be tan x, right? Because when we differentiate tan x, we get second square x, okay? So these are the relationships I want you to keep in mind. And this is just some of the trig functions, okay? The other ones can be solved with other techniques of integration, which we, we will discuss in this video. Okay, now let's, so let's, most, let's move further. Now, what about, um, um, so what other functions um, that are easy to integrate easily by just looking at um, what function in which when we differentiate it to give us that function. So for, so for example, integral of this is just the same that e raised to power x plus c because when we integrate when we differentiate e raised to power x it will still give us e raised to power x okay good now there's some other standard functions that we should know um, we should memorize basically how their derivatives come about well we don't have much time in this particular video to break every single thing down i mean if you want a video on how I, um, how one can obtain these solutions, um, you can request that and then I'll make a future video on this. So for example, let's say um, my function is one over x squared plus a squared. So when I integrate one over x squared plus a squared dx, the answer to this is just one over a tan inverse of what x over a plus a constant. Now you have to know this form. Okay, and the other one is, say I have one over square root of a square minus x square. 
then the integral of one over square root of a square minus x square dx would give me um, sine inverse of what x over a, okay? So these are the things that I have to take note of. And they would come handy in solving this problem soon. Now, now that we know these basic functions, there are other types. Now that we know these basic functions and how to integrate them, now I would like to take your mind back to some of the techniques of, um, of integration. So let's talk about the techniques of integration and how to think about problems that have problems that have to do with integration. Okay. Now, the first thing, um, that you, the most powerful tool that you can learn is what we call the substitution rule. Right? And this has to do with the relationship between the function that you have in the integ in the integ under the integral sign and um, the derivative of one or two, at, at least one of those functions within the integral sign. So a good example is this. Say, um, so example one, say I want to take the integ uh, integration of, um, Okay, so let's just say x squared over three x cubed. So let's just do it this way. So let's say x cubed plus one, right, dx. See, I want to take this integral of this, okay? Now, what substitution does is it allows you to understand if there's any relationship between um, the two functions that you have. So you can group them into two. One is three X squared, the other one is what? X cubed plus one. Now what relationship can you find here? The classical substitution rule states that, okay, one of these functions should be the derivative of the other function. Now note that what, if I find the derivative of X cubed plus one, this would give me three x squared. Now this is the relationship that you need to observe, right? If you find that one of the functions, when I take the derivative of that function, I will get the other one, then that tells you that what um, you should think of using substitution group. So now how do you use the substitution? You use the substitution, you make, uh, you give another variable. So um, one, the function in which when you are going to, so the function that you will differentiate to give us the other function would be the substitution. So in this case, um, u x cubed plus one would be the function that you'll be substituting for u, okay? Now, the main aim of this method is we are going to shift everything that has to do with x in this integration, in this under this integral sign to u. Okay, so we've already done the first one, which is x cubed plus one is going to be u. Okay, and the idea is because I know that what the derivative of u with respect to x would be three x squared. Somehow, this three x squared in the numerator would be cancelled um, out. Okay, so let's try and figure this thing out. So the first thing is what find du dx. Okay, which is what we observed already, which is three x squared. Now, what you do next is you make the x subject of formula. So which gives us du over three x squared. So just think about it, cross multiply, you have the x here, divide both sides by three x squared, you have du over three x squared. So that is how you have the x. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so now this is the x. So what's the substitution? Now come back to the integral. We have not done anything to this three x squared in the numerator, we leave it there. But the denominator, we've changed it to what, u. And then the X, we have changed the X, we've written it in terms of the U, which is the most, the second most important um, substitution, okay? Now, as you can see, this is beautifully set up in such a way that what? Three X squared will now cancel the initial three X squared. So the main problem becomes integral of what? DU over U. And we all know that what? Integral of one over X, is going to give us lean x. So the integral of one over u would be what? Lean u plus c. And then you can substitute u back, which is u was what? x cubed plus one plus c. Now, if you notice, if I take the derivative of this function, I'm going to get three x squared over x cubed plus one. 
Okay, so this is the idea behind the substitution rule. And you can reuse this over and over again, and it can come in different shape, um, shapes and forms. So let's look at another example of this. So let's say we want to integrate an x. Okay, this is what we're trying to integrate. Now, notice that tan x in itself is what? Sine x over what? Cos x, then the x. Now, what was the relationship between sine and cos? If I take the derivative of cosine, what would it give me? It will give me minus sine. Now, another beauty of differentiation um, of substitution rule is as long as you have sine, um, when you differentiate cosine x, it's just going to be a constant multiplied by whatever you have as the other function. It is valid. You can still use substitution for that. What I mean is, let's say you, you find the def um, derivative of the denominator. And if you got that out, it is a constant multiplied by the numerator. This is allowed because somehow this numerator will still cancel out, leaving this constant. Okay, so that's why this substitution is also valid. We can just substitute u and cosine for u, and when I find the u dx, that would give me minus sine x, right? Which means my dx always make the x of the formula. That would give me du over minus sine x, okay? Now I need to now substitute this into the um, problem, which means, for, don't forget sine x is still there, cause x becomes u, and then the x becomes du over minus sine x. You can see that what minus sine x will still cancel out, even though I have minus one attached to the derivative, right? It's not going to affect the solution. In fact, you can still easily integrate any function that is multiplied by a constant, right? Because you can always take the constant out and integrate whatever is inside the function, inside the integral, right? So in this case, sine x will cancel again, and then I would end up having minus one over u du. So I can basically take the minus out, minus one over u du. Um, and what is that? This is basically minus times, solution to this is just lean u plus C. And what is lean u? Lean u in this case, u is what? Cos x. So this will be the answer to that problem. Now, this is why substitution is very powerful. So we just keep it as substitution at this stage. Okay? All right, cool. We're also going to learn another rule very, very soon when we're solving the second problem. So just make sure you go, um, you go over the substitution rule over and over again to get really acquainted with this method. Now we're gonna use it to solve one of the two problems here. So let's get started with the first one. So the first problem um, states that we should find the integral of the x over root of 25 minus 16 x squared. Now notice that this problem has the same feature as this one. This is why you needed to understand the solution to this. The rest will take care of itself using substitution rule, okay? Now we can write, um, so notice that you can write 25 as what, five square, right? That was the aim. Your aim is to write this whole function similar to this one in the same fashion. So we can write 25 as five square, which is equivalent to a square minus 16 x squared can now be written as what? 4x all square. Remember, 16 is what? 4 square. Then when you attach it to x, I write it as what? 4x all square, which is which makes sense, right? Um, and everything is still valid as long as, what must be true, as long as you just have a constant multiplying the x that you have, okay? This, so, um, I mean, now we can use substitution because all we have is, the only modification we have here is we're having for multiplying x, okay? Now, what do we do? We substitute a variable for this, right? Because we know how to integrate something like this when it is just one single variable, when it's just a variable without anything attached to it, okay? So when you now we have four attached to x, so we can just substitute one variable for this and then work with that, okay? So the next thing is substitute four x for u. Okay, and then you can see that what du dx is what? Four, 
which means the X is what? The U over four. Now, coming back to the in integral, we can now rewrite it as what? One over square root of five square minus, now four X is now U, U square, multiplied by the X, what is the X? du over four, okay? So um, let's continue here. So this is basically one over four. Remember that we can take the constant out, one over four integral of what? One over five square minus u square du, okay? We can just write du on top, right? Just put things together. One times du is just du. The um, then four times this, we can take the four out, multiplying the square root of five square minus u square. Now, we can easily solve this, take the one over four out. What is the integral of this? Very easy, using this, using this solution, it means it's just sine inverse of what? U over five, then plus C, okay? I think this is very clear. Now, but then what is, remember you have to substitute U back, which is just four X, over five plus C. So this would give us the answer to the problem using substitution rule, okay? This is a very good skill to have and it's always applicable when you see your function is related to um, a classic, you know, this is, these are called standard forms. When you see that um, your function can be um, can be modeled into one of the standard forms, and then you just kind of use substitution to make it look like the initial function, the standard function, basically, right? So you just model your problem to look like the standard function. In this case, what did we do? We model the four x to be equal to u, so that I will just have it as a, in form of a square minus x square. In this case, five square minus u square. Okay, so that is how I know the substitution to use. All right, the next problem is a little bit of, it's a little bit different from this. So uh, we will also explain the principle behind how to integrate such, okay? Which is basically the substitution in this cell. So it's not, um, it's not anything crazy, right? There are crazier versions of this. Uh, and hopefully in the future videos, we are going to explain those as well. So all we have is this, divide by x raised to the power four minus x plus two dx. Now, what does this give us? Notice that, so all we note is that the derivative of the denominator. So all you need to do is always to find the derivative of one of the functions to see if, if it gives the other one. So derivative of this is four X cubed minus one. And as you can see, it's the same thing as the numerator. So this tells us substitution would work fine, okay? So now you substitute for the denominator, okay? And then when you find the U, the X, this will give us exactly what we thought, four X cubed minus one. Now you make the X subject of formula, so just think about this is over one, make the X of the formula, that will be du over four X cubed minus one. Okay, now we are ready to substitute. So we go back to the initial integ integral. We haven't done anything to the numerator. All we have done is change the numerator to what? Denominator to U and then change the X to what? Du over four X cubed minus one. Now four X cubed minus one will cancel out. And what you would have is du over u, which is integral of this is just lean of u plus c. And what is lean of u is just, what is u? is just x raised to power four minus x plus two. So this is the solution to that second problem, right? So make sure you spend more time um, looking at problems that have to do with substitution. There are so many other variations of this type of problems and we'll be looking at those in future videos. So for now, adios, and I'll see you guys in the next video.